This is a, another uh, Pleiadian channeling session. Uh, after receiving multiple synchronicities to channel uh, Pleiadians today. Uh, this is May 13th, Monday, 530. <clears throat> What? And opening deeper now into your reservoir of infinite self. Accessing the aspects of your memory that transcends the idea of you being a singular being. Remember that memory is also akin to what you understand to be knowingness. Whenever you're accessing a memory, you have a level of knowingness behind it. And that is why you are always carrying your memories with you in the sense that you can access them whenever you need them. It is because it is tuning you in to a level of knowingness, a knowingness that you are always connected to all perspectives that your I am self has experienced, period. Not just a human incarnation, but other incarnations, because that is still the I am presence, but from a different point of view, linked by a soul consciousness, or an oversoul consciousness. Remember, it's still the I am presence. And your memories of which you have done are tapping you into a knowingness of all of your connections. And when you begin to explore what memory actually is, you can tune in to much more of these connections and you'll realize you can remember things you have not directly experienced in this incarnation. And the idea is because the memories never leave you. They are always with you. They are always accessible to you. And right now, as we are playing with you, because that's what this is. This is a game. Remember, don't be so serious about life. It's a game. You don't have to flip the board and throw all the pieces around. Life is a game. It is an infinite game where you create the rules. That is the kind of game we're playing here. It is the most intimate version of what you would understand to be a simulated reality, but not using the technologies that you are limited to in your current Earth-based experience. This is a simulated reality in the sense that you are dreaming it 
your consciousness is the simulator. And this projection of your consciousness into space and time is the simulation. And it is the rules that you craft within yourself that determines how the simulation will appear and what levels, what advancements, what abilities, what synchronicities, what characters are available to you in the game is all dependent upon your rules that you get to create. Now, back to our original idea. We are playing with you. And through playing with you, we are helping you to remember more of your own personal incarnations. We are helping you to remember specifics about your life in the stars, your life on other versions of Earth, what you'd understand to be your ancient Earth, as well as what you'd understand to be your future Earth, because all of these are simultaneously occurring and they are all available now. We want you to realize that there is nothing that is technically off limits. The idea is what is appropriate for your reality will emerge at the synchronistic proper time. So that means if you don't know it now, it's not off limits. If the information you desire is not obviously staring you in the face, it doesn't mean it's off limits. It simply means that it is already here, but you have to allow for the synchronicity to work with your perception so you can instantaneously manifest the point of view where you understand the answers to the questions. It's all right here. It's all a matter of perspective. Now, back to this game analogy, because we love games. We love to play. Remember this, that all good games, and we're not talking about what you understand to be your simple board games. We mean very fun games. You could consider it much more akin to what you've called role-playing games. That's how we would technically describe it. All good games have a good story. When you invent the rules for your simulation, for your game, remember you are also crafting the story because the rules are what create the structure that then enables the story to flow. So if you have very limiting and rigid rules of what is possible in your reality in relationship to your perception of what is within your reality, such as yourself, such as other people, such as events, such as what is possible for you to experience, you will create a limited story. The grand epic story will have to flow through a very rigid structure so you get a very rigid story. But when you open up the rules to the game to be much more in resonance with what it is you prefer, you want, you desire, you love, you truly know, again, transcending belief, what you know to be true, when you allow for that to be the rules of the game, a story that is called in many languages, the greatest story ever told, is then able to flow through your life. We are referencing a version of reality that has its own vibration. And it is a version of reality that many beings are tapped into. And that is why it has that title, The Greatest Story Ever Told. This is an actual theme that is known across various races. It is known within multiple galaxies. And it is a version of reality that becomes perceivable when a being has created rule frameworks that allow for such a story to be possible to be experienced. So understand, 
begin to contemplate, begin to imagine what does the greatest story ever told feel like? And going deeper, what does it feel like in relationship to you as a player in the story, a character in the story? This will tune you into the frequency. And understand, this is a point of view that is already utilized by billions of beings. Billions of beings are operating within this point of view. Not all beings operate in this point of view. There are many beings that choose limitation and what you'd understand to be low density experiences because that's a theme that they want. And the multiversal, multi-universal expressions allow for this to occur and understand it occurs within its own paradigm of reality-based perception. The universe, the multiverse, also supports the idea of the greatest story ever told being a version of it you can experience that exists within its own version of this realm of possibilities. This is, again, a reality contained within this grand architecture. You can then select this and understand you are shifting your point of view to a different version of the multiverse. And then you are able to already play the part. As soon as you shift your point of view to that, you are immediately playing the part. You don't have to get ready. You don't have to pack your bags. You don't have to say goodbye to your family. You don't have to go to school. You don't have to quit your job or get a job. You don't have to save your money. As soon as you shift your point of view to that vibration, you are already in it. Now, once you're in that point of view, you are going to have to go through what is oftentimes described in your English translations as a hero's journey. Once you shift to that point of view, you become your own main character where you then begin to develop yourself. And the reason for this is your ego personality self you experience on the ground, the version of yourself you experience when you wake up in the morning and you're looking at your hands or you're looking in the mirror this version of yourself is the character. It is the consciousness behind this version of yourself that gives life to this version of yourself that you could call the director. And when you begin to shift into the idea of being a character in the greatest story ever told, you actually begin to shift your point of view automatically from being the character to being the director. And as a result, you then begin to develop your character because you're stepping outside of your character. You're expanding your point of view where you are then able to begin to look at the you on the ground, the you in the body, and you can see that it is malleable. You can see that it is on a journey and you can see that you are actually guiding it. In other words, the version of yourself that is taking the director role is actually guiding the whole story. What this means is whenever you experience something in your reality, it's not a mistake. It's not random. It's not an accident. And it is not something that means the story is going to end or stop unfolding. Understand that anything you experience is what the director aspect of yourself is writing into the story so your character can develop. That means everything you experience in your reality framework is designed to help your character expand and develop its point of view and to evolve itself. So that way, 
you can go through what you'd understand to be the progressions of the hero's journey. There are different archetypal themes that are embodied from time to time by the character. At times you will be the student realizing, okay, I am being taught by the universe. I am being taught by God. I am being taught by life. Okay, I have to learn and I do not know anything. And once you go from this point of view, you then become much more of an adept where you start to realize, all right, I have the ability to tap in to magical abilities, magical properties, aspects of my own consciousness that allow for me to shape and alchemically craft the life I desire. And you start to evolve in this way. Once you're past that, you start to enter the realm of being the master. And when you are at the realm of the master, you are simultaneously embodying the point of view of the director and the point of view at the character. Realizing that they are actually one and the same, but the character must be chiseled, must be developed in such a nurturing way, such a particular way, over the course of of its experiences that enable it to be able to see that this has always been true. And that is the realm of master, realizing that you are also the director simultaneously and being able to hold both frequencies at the same time as a homogeneous point of view. And what you'll find is that from there, the cycle begins again. However, the character, the novice, the hero at the beginning of the journey, then has under its belt all of the experiences that it gained in the last level where it went from novice to master. And you will find you will always be going through a perpetual evolutionary process of self-discovery, being guided again by yourself. But the difference is when you embody that initial master role, where you begin to see that you are both the creator, the director, and the character, when you then go into the next cycle, you have more tools in your tool belt where you can begin to craft reality in a very unique way you begin to realize that in your imagination, you can imagine anything. Anything is possible in your imagination. There are no limitations. You can imagine the most mundane and boring to the most amazing, grandiose, and epic. And your imagination will not block you. You can simply craft it. What you're experiencing here is actual reality framework you are glimpsing them from a physicalized point of view. But the idea is that in this realm that you are accessing when you are using your imagination, you are accessing a version of reality where anything can happen. Understand that all of these images, all of these things you imagine have actual states of being associated with them. They have actual vibrations associated with them. And that means you can imagine that point of view to such an extent that you can then integrate it into your character. You can download it from that imagination dimension, we'll call it, you can download that into your character and begin to embody it. And what you will find is that you are utilizing the imagination as a portal to particular versions of reality that are in resonance with the grander version of the imagery that you can't always perceive with the imagination. You're embodying that. So you're actually shifting to a point of view of the greatest story ever told that is in resonance with that imagery and its greater underlying reality. This then allows for you to begin to create literally whatever you want. Now, what does this mean? For some of you, you might say, 
oh, I want to be a famous celebrity. And you might have an expectation of what that looks like. But you might say, oh, I could never be that or I don't want that. And you can create negative reasons, limiting reasons for why you would never want to birth that reality experience, birth that point of view into your life. But what you must understand is when you follow your soul's urges to a specific point where you are not letting the negative excuses, the negative reasons, the negative definitions stop you from following it, what will happen is you will then begin to manifest a version of reality that is reflective of your soul's urges, your soul's desires that does not have those negative perceptions, those negative limitations associated with it. So in other words, you may want to become a famous singer or a famous celebrity based on your passion, based on you expressing yourself authentically. We're going to continue with this example. But then your mind says, oh no, think of the paparazzi. I'll never have privacy. I'll have to quit my job and my job is, is just so important right now and I need the money, so I can't possibly follow this. When you let go of those limitations and you start to just crystallize the vibration, crystallize the imagery, crystallize the state of being associated with that dream you want to birth and you act on it again and again and again, not expecting a single thing, but you just act on it and you infuse into it the vibration of passion and the vibration of joy, which is, again, your natural state, you will then allow for the greatest story ever told to tell you that story. You will begin to walk it. You will begin to embody it. And this is, again, the level of the master who has realized that he or she is both the character and the master. This is that level then beginning a new hero's journey where they are once again a novice, understanding they are creating the reality. And then what will happen is they then begin to birth the reality and they go into the realm of the adept, realizing that they're part of a story, realizing that they're part of an unfolding, they're not getting in the way. And then they again transcend into the realm of mastery. And what will happen is you will find you are going to constantly be shifting from these points of view, but collecting all of the experiences. We will now begin to shift this idea into perspectives that show why it is not just relevant for you, but why it is also relevant for all other beings you are associated with. Understand that when you are doing this in your own reality, you are absolutely benefiting yourself because you are creating the dream reality that you prefer instead of what you'd call a nightmare reality where you are creating what you don't. And you say, I wish this nightmare would end. Instead, you are creating a dream reality where you can go deeper into the dream, realizing the dream itself is its own multiverse. When you do this for yourself, you are embracing all of your power. And in order to embrace all of your power, you must fully be yourself. You cannot repress yourself. You cannot hide yourself. If you are doing those things, this road will have its challenges that may be a little more turbulent than they would need to be if you would only begin to embrace and unconditionally accept who you are. But this road allows for you to go through that process, and that is why it is relevant to you. That's why this realm of master storytelling, which you are a master storyteller, is so relevant to your development. Because it's enabling you to fully see yourself past all limitation, past all negative projection, who you are at your core. The reason this is relevant to other beings is they get to watch you do it. And when we say other beings, we don't mean other humans, although it can be other humans. And you can serve as inspiration, you can serve as a lesson, you can serve as a teacher, and they can watch you and learn how to do this in their own reality. But you are also 
showing other beings in lower densities. Techniques and tools that have vibrations that they can use to evolve themselves should they ever choose. And it is allowing for you to be a universal teacher. So other beings who are in different aspects of non-physicalized reality that you would consider to be low density or rather dark in their nature, you're giving them a point of view where they can then shift their perspective, creating different realities where they are able to have much more of their own autonomy and are able to begin to become different versions of themselves that you would call positive in that way. Not to say that they're negative just because they're low density. Remember, darkness does not equate to negativity. The idea is when you are positive in that sense, you're allowing for more points of view. You're allowing for more expansion. The idea is the darkness, it's harder to see. It can be a little more challenging to expand into realities that are highly illuminated. You can always expand into more darkness, but what ends up happening is you create a polarized theme from that point of view where all you get to experience is different variations of darkness, which is again, not negative, but it is a limitation for some of these beings at a certain point when they then are asking to evolve. And through you embodying this, you're actually sharing a vibration with them that they can match in their own realities to expand their point of view. And once they begin to do that, they are then able to shift into lighter, more dense, higher density versions of reality where they can then experience light, dark, and neutral. So they still have dark themes if they want to go through that. They have light themes if they want to go through that. And they have neutral themes if they want to go through that. And there are variations of positive and negative and neutral in terms of vibrational quality that are then available to them. So it expands their point of view so they can see more versions of reality and then experience life from that perspective. In addition to this, you also have beings that are very high density that observe you. When this occurs, when high density beings are paying attention to you and learning from you, what they are essentially doing is they are learning about themselves through your eyes because you actually begin to interact with them more. These beings are so expanded in this sense that when you are interacting with them, which you do oftentimes, but just don't know it by the way, they actually are able to see through your eyes. So they begin to perceive themselves differently you are actually reflecting to them which you'd understand to be aspects of their own darkness, which does not equate to negativity, but it is the unknown aspects of them. And that is because you are still experiencing high degrees of which you'd understand to be unique versions of darkness because there are different versions of darkness that exist, but you are experiencing a very unique version of darkness in your current earth theme. And when you interface with these very high density beings containing that within you, you then get to show them their own darkness, their own mystery within themselves, so they can then actually expand their story in unexpected directions that they would not have access to if they were not able to interact with you. So your experience propels the evolution of the entire multiversal expression. That is why your experience is so important Everything evolves through you. The reason this occurs is because in order to be on earth, you must experience both light and dark realities to varying degrees and varying extents as part of your soul expression in order to incarnate as a human being. It means you have seen in terms of density, the highest of high and the lowest of lows, you've had to overcome very interesting challenges, very interesting obstacles in order to then 
essentially get the codes so you could incarnate as a human. So all beings then are able to observe you so they can learn from you. You are a universal teacher. That is one of the major benefits of being a human being. You are a universal teacher because you are masters in that way. You are actually teaching the inhabitants of the multiverse through your existence. Oftentimes, you come to them, you come to beings like us, because you believe that we can assist you with our perspectives and our information. And we can, and we oftentimes do, but it is never one-sided. You are always educating us, and we consider ourselves lucky to be interacting with you. And we view it as equal in this way. We see it as a gift, and we see it as a mutual beneficial interaction. And that is why we call it a game, because everyone is benefiting, and we see it as fun. We play with that. And that is why we say we play with you. Because we are all being honored in this process. You as a human being are some of the greatest servants to the universe. In the sense that you are creating a reality perspective that allows for so many infinite beings to be able to observe you and learn from you and apply the teachings that you impart as a master in their own reality frameworks. This is part of the role of a human being. And you will find that as you continue to evolve, all aspects of consciousness will begin to evolve with you, reflecting your own evolution. This is all we will say on the matter for now, but please understand it does go deeper and the mystery never ends. A perpetual balance of light and dark and neutral and the perspective that contains them all. Because the dark allows for the mystery, the light allows for the discovery, and the all that contains these perspectives understands the whole story in its complete picture, all parallel infinite versions of the story. This is what you call God. So please enjoy your story. Enjoy your role as the master director. Enjoy your progression in your levels of advancement on your hero's journey. Enjoy your role as the novice. Enjoy your role as the adept. Enjoy your role as the master. Never judge whatever role archetype you are experiencing yourself as. Understand they are all exactly how they need to be. And if you feel you need a reminder of ways to validate yourself, in this respect, remember as soon as you imagine you are part of the greatest story ever told, you are allowing for its presence to come through your life, so you can then act in that way as if you were a character in that story, which again will reveal to you the fact, in that sense, that you are the one writing the story. We bid you all a beautiful day from your star family. In Asalone, we love you infinitely. Thank you for being here for us, and we will always be here for you. Thank you.